Welcome back. So this is the fourth and final session, and we're bringing it together with some case studies looking at products with recycled content in construction. And I hope you can learn something from these case studies for the work that you do. So in these projects, the case studies were led out of the RMIT team. And there were four case studies. A one commercial project, Brickwork Shopping Centre, client Fraser's Property Group. Second one, infrastructure project, the Mordulot Freeway, uh, Major Roads Victoria, uh, the client there. The third, Tonkin Gap Highway, uh, Main Roads Western Australia with a client. And the fourth, Hamilton Hill Residential uh, Development WA with a client. So these were conducted um, in, in 2022 and 23. So why they were chosen? A recent history of using a significant quantity of PWRC, access to project information, and the ability to recruit research participants. And I hope you find them useful. So there's going to be a slide on three of them. Uh, one commercial, uh, one infrastructure, the Mordiot Freeway, and the residential one at Hamilton Hill. And they'll give some examples of PWRC that, again, I hope that you can use. So for the Brickwork Shopping Centre in Melbourne, it used crushed concrete in the sub-base of bitumen, uh, use of materials from slab form working as hanging timber and timber cladding in the ceiling, and the use of second-hand brick purposed into tiles and concrete in floors. And finally, the use of crushed brick left over as finish on facades. So if you think back to the second session on the materials, we're covering three of those materials here, concrete, timber, and brick. For the second case study, uh, looking at the Modular Freeway in Melbourne, uh, there's some statistics here, and the scale is demonstrated by the numbers in the brackets. So 75% recycled plastic was used for rotationally moulded panel within the noise wall, walls, up to 10 kilometres of that. Um, so a lot of uh, material, 600 tonnes of plastic waste. H full uh, recycled sub-base pavement materials and 44% PWRC in asphalt pavements, um, over 270,000 tonnes of pavement material. 10% crushed glass and 30% reclaimed asphalt product in the asphalt pavement. 100% recycled polypropylene plastic in the concrete re reinforcing mesh. And finally, 100% recycling high density polyethene uh, in the stormwater drainage pipe. So there's some more examples um, from a transport case study. And finally, the fourth case study, uh, 115 Hamilton Hill in Perth. The application of PWRC to the project. It used salvaged timber in the landscaping. It reused 40,000 clay bricks and roof tiles as aggregates underneath the drainage infrastructure. Uh, old bricks were reused to create brick walls and a brick toilet block. Um, a reuse of various materials, including brick, tiles, and concrete, into the road sub base. Uh, 2,425 uh, cubic meters of recycled concrete was used in retaining walls. And finally, 400 tonnes of PWRC in different applications, including to construct temporary truck access, road, access roads. So from these cases, a range of different PWRC, different contexts, uh, different uses, and different level of and scale of benefits. And finally, on this one, we mentioned uh, some general certification. Uh, really important to, to get that, that badge. Um, in terms of the specification here, um, IPWEA and WALGA uh, was used for specifications, more details there, and also sustainability recognition from the Urban Development Institute of Australia. So that's some examples of materials in the case studies. In terms of the background research in the case studies, so four different types of people were interviewed in each of the four case studies. So there were 16 interviews. Uh, the four uh, types were the builders, uh, the clients, uh, the designers, and the suppliers of PWIC. So these are some of the findings from the designer ones, so from the four case studies. And basically, where they were split into motivations, why they're doing it, some strategies in response, and then finally some, some barriers which remain. So I'll just read out some of, the, some of them. There are more there for you to read and review, and I hope it gives you some, some encouragement as well as see some of the barriers. So in terms of motivation, climate comes back, reducing the carbon footprint is mentioned, uh, reducing the need for um, 
materials abstraction, uh, alignment with circular economy, social responsibility. So there are some um, clear motivations. I see certification there as well. And various strategies to overcome that. Clearly early engagement with the stakeholders that this is important to the project. Uh, to make sure that uh, there's um, PWRCs, post-occupancy of the buildings. Uh, getting the right contractual mechanism, getting the finances right are really important. But there are a lot of barriers still there. Uh, maybe PWRC is not suitable, uh, maybe the cost of it is still prohibitive, uh, maybe there's a reluctance in the industry, uh, in some parts of the industry I'd like to think, <laughs> in using PWRC. So there's some um, ideas and thoughts for you. In terms of the strategies, uh, there were 45 factors identified from those interviews to reduce the impact of the challenges faced. And these strategies were categorised into 13 groups listed on the right. And the top two included effective project management planning, um, but also the most uh, important was effective education, investigation and demonstration activities, which was actually 11 out of the 16 uh, people interviewed mentioned that. And that's quite a neat way of finishing this training package. So as we've developed over these projects, the training, um, education, I hope you found them useful. And I'm hoping that we can further develop this training and education to help the industry move forward in the real challenge that we face over circular economy. So thank you very much for uh, listening and watching. Uh, here are some references that were quoted during the presentations. And basically, uh, do look at the the um, Sustainable Environment Natural Research Centre pages. Uh, feel free to contact either myself, my email address is there, and also uh, one of the contacts at RMIT, Dr. Salman Shustarian, his information is there. So thank you very much, I hope you find them enjoyable, but also I hope you find them useful, and I hope they spur you to, to look through some of the materials uh, that were in, in the presentations, also to reflect and apply it to the work that you do. All the very best with your work, and thanks again from me here at Griffith University Studios.